Hi guys. Happy Sunday. It's time for Family Sunday School again and I'm assuming that you're getting the routine down now. We need a snack, a little water, something to drink, and we need your family. So if you don't have a snack, something to drink, and a family, then it's time to pause and go get them. Come back. So you have your snack and you have your family and a little something to drink. And now it's time to take some time to talk to each other. Um, I would love to be the one talking to you, of course, but, and I would love to hear your stories. But today you get to talk to your family again, unless you want to make a video and send it to me, which you certainly can. Um, but I have my story for today all set. This is my hand today. You might notice that this finger right here is fat and red because I got stung yesterday when I was inspecting one of my beehives. One of those little girl bees just decided she didn't want my hands in there and she stung me. So it's a little itchy today. It doesn't hurt at all, but it's swollen. So now it's your turn to talk to your family, your brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandmas, grandpas, whoever you have with you, and um, tell them something that you haven't told them yet from this week, hopefully. If you can't think of something from this week, think back a little more. You'll come up with something. All right, enjoy your time talking and then come back. Hi guys, so it's story time now. I'm down on the carpet for story time and uh, today I think we need some props. So I'm going to go and search for um, anything that can be people. So in our story today, we're in a courtyard with Jesus and there's soldiers and there's religious leaders and there's curious people and Peter, and just lots of people that are in the courtyard with them, and so they can hear what's going on and, and that kind of thing. So I'm going to go get um, probably a Mr. Potato Head or two and whatever else I can find to add to my area here so that I have lots of people in my courtyard. So I want you to go search your house and find stuffed animals, whatever you can find, to bring back to your courtyard and join your family. And um, then we'll start our story. All right, so here's your pause. Ding! Hi guys, welcome back. I've gathered my people in my courtyard for our trial of Jesus so they can all be part of the trial. And I hope you did too. If you uh, are sitting there with all of your people, I'd love to see a selfie of it. So take one, Ching! you and your family, and send it to me later. Okay, but for now, let's hear our story. So I'm not actually going to read it to you from a book today because some, sometimes it's just easier to tell the story. Um, but I will show you this picture so you can imagine what's going on. You see Jesus and you see the high priest and you see other people and soldier. And so this is what happened. At Jesus' trial, um, after they arrested him in the garden, they brought him to the high priest's house. Not to a regular place where they would where they would normally have a trial. They brought him to the house. And the other thing that was not right was that it was nighttime. Remember, it was nighttime when he was praying and they kept falling asleep. And then they arrested him and it was still nighttime. And now they're doing this trial in front of the religious leaders and other people at night, which really isn't when you should be having a trial. And the trial was made very unfair because... The high priests and religious leaders had already decided that they wanted Jesus guilty. So they didn't have any evidence against him because he had never done anything wrong. But they did have people that they were in charge of. And they got those people to try and lie about Jesus and tell stories about Jesus. But the problem was their stories, you could tell they were lying because their stories didn't match. So eventually the leaders had to figure out some way to say that Jesus was guilty. So they finally just said to him, they said, um, people have heard you say that you're the son of God. And Jesus agreed that he was the son of God. And on, that was actually the first time he spoke during all of this unfair trial while people were lying and calling him things and saying things that were calling him names and saying things that weren't true. He was quiet. But when the religious leaders asked him if he was the son of God, that's when he spoke up and he said, I am the son of God. 
And they said, well, that's called blasphemy, and you cannot say that. It's against the law. And anybody who says their God is uh, sentenced to die. So now they had their proof that they wanted that Jesus should be killed. And so he was taken off to the Roman governor who then said, okay, we'll crucify him if that's what you want. And um, the religious leaders and the people said, yep, that's what we want. And so they let him off and the Roman guards hung him on a cross and he died. And it was very horrible and bad, but it comes to, it becomes a great story uh, later on, in a couple weeks, you're going to hear the good news that comes from this bad story. And um, most of the time in life, you will find that when bad things happen, if you, if you keep your eyes open and you keep your ears open and you keep your heart open, that there is a good lesson or a goodness of some sort. Maybe something good happens to somebody else. Maybe it's not you. But there's something good that comes from it. And um, part of that is just really looking for it. So today I was thinking um, about this trial of Jesus and how unfair it was and how people lied about him and how he just stood there being very strong. He didn't yell back at any of the people. He didn't say, you're a liar to anyone. He just listened to them, and when he was asked the question, he told the truth. And um, I wondered if any of you guys have ever had a friend or a neighbor or a family member who maybe was mean to you or told a lie on you or name-called you, and I wondered what your reaction was to it. Did you stand strong and just stay quiet? Or did you feel that you needed to argue back and prove to them who you were? Or did you know who you were in your heart and that, that what they were saying was not true and it didn't matter what they said because it wouldn't change you? So I thought today maybe with your family you could talk about one of those times where um, you were hurt by someone else and how you reacted and then also, you can talk about ways to kind of take note that next time it happens, try and remember Jesus and stand strong and think, you know, they're saying that about me, but it doesn't make it true. So how, how can I act like Jesus? How can I follow Jesus and do as he did? Um, so talk to your family about something that's happened in the past and how you reacted, and then talk about how you begin to take note and notice things happening before you react so that you can start to react like Jesus. All right? Okay. So talk about that. Here's your pause. Welcome back. So we finished our story. Hopefully you talked about some times when you've been hurt and how unfair that seemed and how you reacted and how maybe next time you can be strong like Jesus and just stand there knowing who you are on the inside, that God loves you just the way you are and that no matter what other people say, you are loved by God and you are cared for by so many people in this world. So our activity to go along with the story today is kind of a, a darkness and light kind of activity because the story of Jesus dying seems so dark and sad and yet I can tell it with a smile on my face because I know that the light and the happy and the joy that comes from the story. And so I've done this experiment with some of the kids before, but I think that you'll have fun doing it together as a family and it's that fast, which is really nice during this time of homeschooling that you can do that fast. So all you need is a flashlight or you could just use a lamp and do it, use the lamp as the light if you don't have a flashlight. And you need either a lighter or you can use a match or you can use a candle um, that you could light. All right, and this is what you're gonna do. You're going to turn on your flashlight and you're gonna shine it on the lighter or the candle or the match and look at the shadow that it makes and think about the darkness 
that happened in this story, the darkness, the, that Jesus died, that people told lies about him, that the religious leaders wanted to trick him and, and, and have him killed. So there's a lot of darkness in this story. And when you shine your flashlight at that lighter or candle or match, you will see that shadow, that darkness on the wall behind it. But I told you there's also light in this story. So you're gonna keep your flashlight shined on your lighting thing. And then when you light it, I want you to look at your shadow because you will see that there's, it, does, it doesn't make a shadow. The flame, let me do this the right way. The flame that you're gonna make on your candle or your lighter or your match, <laughs> it's not gonna show up in the shadow because that light going through light does not create a shadow. And this story has so much light to it that we can remember that when we feel like we're a shadow and, and sad or scary or upset or our feelings are hurt or we're, we're just kind of not feeling great, we can, re we can remember that that light is still there. Even if we can't see it, all we see is the shadow, the light is there. And so in this story today, we learned the darkness of Jesus being crucified and having a trial that wasn't fair. But soon we will hear the light that comes with that story and the good news it means for all of us. So that is our story. That's your activity. And um, I'll pause you now so you can go and do it. Go find your flashlight and something that lights. All right. All right, here we are again. We're at the end. It's time for a prayer. I don't know if you guys can tell, but while you're gone, I guess the church air conditioner knew the kids wouldn't be coming because the whole area where our kids' rooms are, the air conditioning will not turn on. And so it is pretty hot up here, but um, we're going to have a prayer even in this heat. All right, so let's bow our heads, fold our hands, and let's think about God while we go to talk to him. All right, dear God, thank you for this story about Jesus. Help us remember how strong he was when people were not nice to him. And help us use that same strength that we get from you and be strong, even if somebody is trying to hurt us or telling lies about us or being mean in any way. We can be strong and know that you love us and that we are doing our very best and that we are trying to follow you and follow Jesus and just grow and, and know you and love you more every day. In Jesus' name we all pray, amen. All right, so it's worship song time, and woo, I can't remember the names of the songs. Let me get my glasses on so I can see what I picked. I picked some old VBS songs, and I will add the link to those songs just like I did in the past couple of weeks. I'm getting quite good at this adding links thing. Um, so the two songs are from, actually, I think they're both from when we did Shipwrecked. VBS a couple years ago. And one is A Million Reasons, and that's A Million Reasons to Thank God because He's so amazing. And the other one is God is for me. And when God is for me, who can be against me? So I want you to sing those songs and use those links so you can dance around and have a praise party. And if you happen to take a picture of you and you're Many people in the courtyard remember to send it to me um, or send me a video of your sharing talk time or send me a video of you dancing and singing. I'd really like to see that one. Um, I do miss you so and I look forward to when we can meet together again. But just remember that we can continue to learn about God. We can continue to follow Jesus even when we can't come to the church building. We just have to take church everywhere else. And uh, we've said that for years. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. So go out there and be the church. All right? I love you all, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.